Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the 1987 Supermod. I'm your host, as always, Brad Drake, and this is my AWA save. Ladies and gentlemen, this is episode 50, and this is tour date number 103. The AWA is cruising into Milwaukee, Wisconsin tonight for a very big show. Let's go ahead and set our venue. So we are in Great Lakes. Now, I have not gone through this beforehand, folks, so I'm not sure. We're looking at 7,100 fans. So let's break that down to 6,000. And I just saw the Milwaukee Auditorium. The Milwaukee Auditorium gives us 10,086. We're going to go ahead and book it because we need to start getting a foothold into Milwaukee. And let's go and take a look here at our backstage incidents. Vivian St. John and Nick Bockwinkle again. Vivian's in trouble for making a mess backstage. So now she has to clean it up and buy drinks for everybody after the show. Boy, you'd never guess with a smile like that that she was a troublemaker, huh? Let's take a look at our absent workers. Frankie DeFalco, Kevin Kelly, Nick Konichki, Tony Leone, Tony Parisi, of course, the usuals. Let's take a look at our card and see if any of those affect us. And it does. Konichki and Rich again. So we're going to break down our card for you as we are in the Milwaukee Auditorium in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Candy Devine is going to open up against Debbie Combs. Konichki and Rich, to be determined actually, will face the Nasty Boys. Eddie Guerrero and Pat Tanaka are going to lock horns once again. Wendy Richter is going to challenge current champion Sherry Martell for the AWA World Women's title. Baron Von Rotschke and Bobby Duncan will continue their nasty feud as they lock up. The Iron Sheik and Billy Robinson will once again put on one of their technical masterpiece performances. The Russians are going to climb in the ring against Slaughter and Snuka, and that may be a mistake. Nick Bockwinkle is going to challenge reigning and defending heavyweight champion of the world, Kurt Hennig, in the main event. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in Milwaukee. Let's get booking. All right, our opener. I got so excited I forgot it already. We're dealing with Candy Devine versus Debbie Combs. Let's go ahead and book this one out. And then we're going to take a look and see if anybody's been getting the upper hand. I'm going to let you in on some inside, inside information here, folks. Inside baseball. I book these shows out for like a week or two at a time, okay? Um, so I'll step away for a few days before I start recording again. And so that's why sometimes I don't remember. I mean, even though we ran a card with these two, with these two only a few days earlier, I just I don't remember. So Candy Devine defeated Debbie Combs the last time. So we're going to have Debbie Combs go over here in Milwaukee. And we are booked up. Konichki and Rich are not available. I am not going to sub out. I'm going to give, I am going to sub out. I'm going to give uh, Johnny Rich a new partner. Frankly, I'm getting tired of this. So there's Johnny Rich. And who are we going to put in there as his partner? So we have a lot of options. Let's take a look at our roster. Let's go back over to singles. And why don't we have Russ Francis get in there with Johnny Rich? Uh, it's, it's not going to be the greatest of matches, but what are you going to do? So we'll put Russ Francis in there for the heck of it. Again, we're talking about releasing Russ Francis here at some point, but... Uh, that does it for us. We got to figure something out about this uh, Nick Konichki thing because it is becoming a problem. He's missing a lot of tour dates here. We're going to leave this one open-ended. We'll let the computer decide who's going to win. And we got Eddie Guerrero versus Pat Tanaka. These matches have been fun. Another 12-minute bout here. Both these men are coming along well for us. 
We've had them in a lot of matches together, and it is working out very well. So let's double check Pat Tanaka. And let's see, Tanaka got the win the last time. Eddie Guerrero got the win this time. So I don't know if I like face win, face win. Now nah, that's okay. That's okay because we might end up with a heel win, heel win. So Eddie's going to go over here in Milwaukee. I'm excited. I don't think we've run, well, on camera here. I haven't run Milwaukee, and it's been a while since I did run Milwaukee. I don't know why I got away from it, but I did. So um, we're going to get a bigger draw in Milwaukee, so we're going to run Milwaukee instead of Green Bay. All right, Wendy Richter, former ladies champion, is going to face Sherry Martell. This match goes 14. And we're going to have Sherry Martell go over by cheating. Strictly because of the fact that we had two face wins in a row. So we have to change it up. A big blow-off show, it's cool. It's fine to have baby faces win several times in a row. But a regular tour date like this, it's not going to work. It's not good for business. The fans need something to piss them off to make them want to come back and buy another ticket. So Sherry Martel gets the win, tainted, of course. And we got Baron Von Rotschke versus Bobby Duncan. This one also goes 14. And this has been a pretty good feud so far. These two are doing well. Let's take a look and see who won the last time. Bobby Duncan won the last time, um, but again, we got two heel wins, a baby face win. Let's leave this one open-ended, uh, especially because of the fact that Baron Von Rotschke was so over in Milwaukee. So that one's booked. We got the Sheik, Iron Sheik versus Billy Robinson. This one's going to go 16. And I am glad that the Iron Sheik has kept his nose clean for us here for a while. Where are you, Robinson? There's Billy Robinson. All right, let's take a look and see how these two have gone. Okay, Billy Robinson got the last win. So we are going to have Iron Sheik get the win here. Ah, technical masterclass we forgot. Oh, making a mess here. There it is. And that has been a good feud, the Sheik and Robinson. All right, we got the Russians versus Snuka. And Slaughter. You know what? Ah, we just ran a six, man. Yeah, we'll just keep this the, the regular. I get excited with those six-man tags. I'm sorry. Eighteen minutes on this one. There's the tag team view. There's our Russians. And there is Slaughter and Snuka. Okay, we're going to leave this one open-ended, but I think we all know who's going to end up winning here. And then our main event, we have Bachwinkle versus Hennig. Now, some of you may be wondering why we're having Bachwinkle lose all these matches. Well, Hennig was losing to him around the circuit. So we want the fans to see our new champion here. We want to see, want them to see him go over. It's important to establish that we have a new world heavyweight champion. If you go back in time, the only people that knew what was going on in other towns were these super smart fans. That was a small minority of fans. 
So it was commonplace for wrestling companies to run the same shows in every town they went, or same finishes, that kind of stuff, just like the circus would do. Nobody was going to care or wonder what's going on in another town. They're not going to know. So our fans here in the AWA, Kurt Hennig has just won the World Heavyweight title. Now we're working the loop, we're hitting our towns. So they are seeing for the first time Hennig in their town as the champion. So it only firms up Hennig here to have him continue to win the title. Or to it's getting to defend the title because for them, it looks like it's his first defense. If that makes sense, I hope it does. So that is the logic and that is the psychology behind this booking. So we are at our usual time of two hours, 22 minutes here. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to start this show. All right, not a bad score here. Divine gets the win, 45. And the Nasty Boys go over here, as we predicted it would happen. Eddie Guerrero gets the win, 35 overall. Oof, it's got to be inexperience hurting them. It is, it's inexperience, and they're not over enough yet. But a very nice score for the ladies match here. And they score a 73 overall. Very nice. Wow. What a score here. Duncan goes over Von Rotsky here with the running big boot. That is a great score. 87. Both these men are over in Milwaukee. All right. This match gets a little bit worse of a score than I thought, but they're, Robinson's getting hit with declining physical ability and inconsistency. So the Sheik wins with the Camel Clutch. The feud continues to gain heat. Decent score. Even though I can't believe that much was taken off for inconsistency in age. But hey, it's their world. This one's a disappointing score. 89, 83, 72, 64 with a 77. That's disappointing. But Sergeant Slaughter gets the win. And this little feud continues here. Let's see what the knocks were. It's got to be inexperience. Yeah. Inexperience, inconsistency, the typical knocks that we get. So we're doing okay score-wise on this card, though. Whoa! Whoa! That right there might be the biggest score we have ever had for a singles match, and I'm pretty certain it is a 98 overall. Both men brought their A game for this one. What a huge score. The only knock was Nick Bockwinkel's declining physical ability. Wow. What a big score. That, my friends, is a golden ace main event and the kind of thing you dream of running these games. These two have been scoring in the upper 80s. Here, our first shot in Milwaukee in a long time, and we got them popping a 98. This is big, everybody. This is really big. Wow. I just I just got to sit here and look at it for a little bit longer because it's such a beautiful thing to see a score that high. All right, you think we've looked at it long enough? Let's give it a couple more seconds. Let me circle around that beautiful 98. And we're going to go ahead and finish up now, folks. A 98. That gives us a 92 overall, which I think is our biggest it's got to be our biggest score change. And here we are, the last day of the month. So obviously, we're not going to get an up. We've already maxed our ups. Wow. We got to give some uh, some praise to Wendy Richter here. And then Kurt Hennig and Nick Bockwinkle. Because they turned a good show into a fantastic show. So we're going to point out Wendy as a good example. We're going to compliment Kurt Hennig on a, a good performance. And we're going to praise Nick Bockwinkle for a great performance. What a score. Making the speeches pleased. Hey, Kurt Hennig's happy. You see that? That's twice now with Kurt Hennig. He's happy with our speech. Very nice. And Nick Bockwinkle is pleased. What a golden show, folks. Huge, huge score. Overall and for that terrific match. I'm a little happy, in case you couldn't tell.
all the screwings, excuse me, all the screwings that we've gotten finally pays off with a score like that. All right, we are now into Monday, the first week of November. So you know what that means. Our next couple shows here are going to be TV tapings. And this is exciting. It's November 1st, 1987. The Continental Wrestling Association changes their name. And they're also merging all their titles. Okay? So check this out, folks. We are going to go in here. And I'm going to show you how this is done. Live and in living color. Okay? He's play obviously we're playing as the owner. And check this out too. None of our events are for November are in there yet because we haven't booked them in there. So we'll have to do that too. I'll do that off camera. But let's go ahead and let's take care of CWA. Remember, they're going from the Continental Wrestling Association to the Championship Wrestling Association. So We have to go in here. Continental Championship. Wrestling Association, sorry. So now we're going to change it over to what it actually changed to. Still remains the CWA. I don't think they changed their logo either. They just did this. They consolidated all their titles. Okay, so the Championship Wrestling Association changed. Yes, I could have done that from the AWA screen. But I couldn't change the titles from the AWA screen. So now we are going to bring in our new titles. Sorry, it's under status. So there's the CWA heavyweight and there's the CWA tag team. So we just unretired it and we just unretired it. Okay. Now, I didn't mean to close that out. We are retiring all the other titles. So the Southern Heavyweight is retired. The Southern Tag Team is retired. At this point in real life, the CWA broke away from the AWA. So we're retiring the International Heavyweight title. We're retiring the International Tag Team title. And we're retiring the Mid-America title. So here we go. This is what they did. The CWA went on went down to having two titles only. So we got everything figured out here and we are good to go. So I'm glad that happened. I'm glad you got to see it and obviously this is going to be in 7.0. It's your choice if you want to do this in your game. But um I like to keep things realistic. So I'm going to do it. Uh what we're not going to do is we're not going to have them break away from the AWA at this point. And in all fairness, they still really didn't because they were still all together for Super Clash 3. So we're going to go ahead and leave the game here. We don't need to use Jerry Jarrett anymore. We've done exactly what we need to do. So Jerry Jarrett's leaving the game, and we're going back to Vern Gagne with the AWA. It's just going to bring us to Tuesday now. And we're going to take a look at our finances. We're going to see how we did last month. And we're also going to check on our status of our merchandise update. I, I can't recall exactly where we're at. Ric Flair. They're actually going to use him. He's going to feud with Jimmy Garvin. Very nice. All right. That's the updates right there. Let's take a look. Let's see how we did in October. Wow. Look at that jump up. We went from making 875,000 to 1.4 million. Our worker costs went up of course, our show costs went up. Look at those ticket sales. We sold eight over $800,000 worth of tickets. Broadcast revenue went up, our sponsors dropped, our merchandise went up. We are doing fantastic. 
we have completely turned around this ship. Obviously, we're not making uh, WWF money or Japan money or anything like that, or even Jim Crockett money, obviously. But we're still doing extremely well here, folks. And the spot shows obviously helped us out. So let's take a look and let's see how we're doing on our merchandise. Okay, so this is our this is our last week for merchandise. So the following Monday, we will be 100% on our merchandise. All right, last month's sales. Kurt Hennig surpassed Jimmy Stuka. Excellent. Kurt Hennig is the man. He is also our ace. He is our, uh, I forget what they call him here, but he's our head wrestler. So this is working out very well for us. So folks, thanks a lot for tuning in this time. Um, next show, of course, we're going to be recording championship wrestling and all-star wrestling. And those are always a lot of fun to do. It's a good time. Um, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel. Give us a like and share this with your friends. Let everybody know about what's going on. I have gotten so many emails and, and phone calls and text messages about 7.0. It has gone over very well. Everybody seems to be extremely excited about it and having a good time playing it. Folks, it's my pleasure to make something like this for you. And I'm really glad that you're all out there and enjoying it. And I'm glad it worked out well. Again, it's a labor of love, and it's my pleasure to do it. And I just really like to bring that historical accuracy into the games. So... If you would like the mod and you don't have it already, go to my website, braddrake.net. Just contact me through the website. I'll be more than happy to send you over a link to the Google Drive page where you can download the database and the picture pack. And last but not least, join us on Facebook, facebook.com slash groups slash 1987 supermod. That's facebook.com slash groups slash 1987 supermod. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, and so long for now.